It's time to level with you guys about why I never made it. Prepare to dive deep into the darkness of Shreddian history. Honestly, I'm a failure, and you're about to find out why. Maybe score yourself a snack and some WAP juice, and let's do this. Cheers. Oh, oh, disgusting. Now the last thing you want is to be a failure on guitar. Good news, you can sign up for my free guitar newsletter below. I'm dishing out free tabs, tips, and tricks. Oh yeah, did I mention it's free? There's only so much I can teach you through email. Score my full music theory course below in the description if you want to hit level 666. Technique, music theory, the circle of fists, songwriting, everything you need to unlock your hidden potential. I was born Shredimus Maximus the 69th <laughs> in North Korea. All right, just kidding. My real name is Scott Montai. It's hard to pronounce that last name for most people. It's a German origin. I was born in 1983 in sunny Southern California. My first love was animals, believe it or not. Now, I'm not talking about the band, the animals. Uh, we're talking grizzly bears, sharks, dinosaurs. Then around age 11, I got into sports, basketball, football, tennis, anything athletic. But it wasn't until I was about age 12 or so that I started to get into my true love, music. Ever since I discovered music, I always wanted to play in a band. I remember hearing Korn for the first time in the mid-90s, and it just blew my mind. One of the main reasons I wanted to play a seven-string guitar. The raw, expressive creativity of the group and Jonathan Davis's vulnerability really resonated with my teenage angst. So I started to finger the G-string. I picked up guitar at age 12, my father's guitar, but the action was like 14 miles off the board, so I couldn't really handle my hardwood that great. I quit and then restarted again at age 14 with an electric guitar, much easier on the fangers. At this point, I started rapping songs like Sweet Child of Mine, like 69X per practice session until my mom started losing it. Sorry, mom. I begged my dad to take me to Guitar Center and get a real amp, so we went and picked up a Marshall Valve State 100. I brought this to my first band practice and played pentatonic scales as fast as possible. It was a complete disaster. Everybody cringed. And eventually, my antics got me kicked out of the band. I had no real interest in songwriting or anything. I was just trying to play as fast as possible all the time. You might say I adopted the Yngwie Malmsteen more is more strategy, and I wasn't even against donuts. My delusions of grandeur continued to develop, though. Uh, my cousin Luke introduced me to progressive metal in the band Dream Theater. I started to idolize technical facility of players, you know, like John Petrucci. They had this incredible speed and accuracy. Around this time, I started telling everybody that I wanted to play in a band and make it in the music industry. I don't know if you've ever tried this, but oftentimes you get a lot of pushback when you profess your dreams to the world. I remember a lot of people telling me I would never make it, including my own family members. Shout out to my patron Cisco for calling these people dream killers. We were discussing this on my Discord chat the other day. <clears throat> Sometimes you just have to put blinders on and not listen to what the world is telling you. Focus on your dreams and go for it. Your will to power is the most valuable thing you possess. In other words, are you able to make your desires realized in the world? Most people give up too easily. They don't have the tenacity or persistence. Your agency has limitless value. It's like Pinhead said in Hellraiser, suffering is the coin of the realm. You must first go through pain if you want pleasure. So I pursued suffering. I got a book and started studying music theory on my own. It was very difficult. But my goal was to be able to pass the entrance exam at college. So at age 17, I enrolled at Azusa Pacific University here in Los Angeles and barely squeaked by the theory entrance exam. There's a lot of things I didn't know, but I was pretty good at identifying things like key signatures and intervals. And my father wanted me to study business at school, but I 
kind of went behind his back and declared a business major, but then I took all the music classes and no business classes. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. I jammed with a lot of people at school, but had a hard time finding the right match. I would also play reunion jams with my cousins at family reunions. <laughs> of like playing death metal at the bar it's the wrong audience around the age of 21 22 right after i graduated school i started to write my first album this was about the year 2006 i submitted that album to metal blade the record label metal blade and they rejected me citing a lot of reasons that were totally valid i recorded this album on my own didn't know what i was doing at all they said things like you should double track your guitars which is totally legitimate i programmed all the drums keyboards i still to this day like the quality of my musical ideas there but the technical execution and recording quality was atrocious Not giving up on my dream of being in a band next, I went to Belgium to audition for Nightwish. My cousin Luke convinced me to do this, shout out to him. I remember playing selected songs that Floor Jansen had chosen at her house in a freezing cold. It was outside, it was in her barn that we played, and this was in winter. It was, it was probably 25 degrees in that barn, it was absolutely frigid. Rejected again, I'm a failure. Flora sent me an email and said, you're not the right fit, you don't even live in this country, Country. How's this even going to work? Reasonable criticism. So then I moved to Hollywood in 2010. I joined several bands upon getting here to LA. I played up and down the Sunset Strip, trying to make it the old way, just like Guns N' Roses, The Doors, and many others. After doing that for about three years, I realized I wasn't going to make it. The impending doom and failure was setting in. It was time to give up on my dream. Around this time, I noticed the world was was changing. Everyone was on this rat race, paying to play, and not really getting any traction with their music. Social media was on the rise, and I started to become obsessed with platforms like YouTube. I noticed you could get a lot more attention on the internet with less effort. Putting all my gear in the car, hauling it to the Sunset Strip to play for 15, 20 people was just not cutting it anymore. No way to make money or actually have a real career. So I found a new way social media started instagram eventually and start cranking out content like crazy i reinvented myself i learned uh, search engine optimization. I learned cameras and video editing. I learned how to record audio better. I learned how to speak and communicate ideas and articulate my thoughts. Again, it comes back to this concept of will to power. Can you make your dreams a reality through persistence and tenacity? Are you self-sufficient or are you trying to rely on someone else to accomplish your dreams? Even though I failed at starting a band, what I'm doing now, I think, is a much better fit. The truth is you only have one chance in this life and I want to know what's your story now that I've told mine. What do you want out of life? Where have you been and where are you going? Join my Patreon page below for all my tabs, courses, reaction requests. I'll put the link down there in the deep south. Discord access, which is amazing. This is where we can chat every day, motivate each other to practice and share our goals. Now, I'm going to go start a band with Cardi B, Lil Wayne, and DJ Khaled. <laughs> Ha 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 ha.